Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper Block tutorial. Today, I'm getting ready to go and work with a band outside of my own studio. So I need to get my laptop set up with Reaper with as close to the same configuration as possible. So here I am on my desktop computer. On the left, I have a portable flash drive. On the right is my Reaper folder. So I'm gonna copy everything over to the flash drive and we'll talk about uh, how things are different, what to expect when you're moving your configuration from a desktop with a really big screen over to a laptop where it's a small screen, don't have any of the peripherals, anything like that. So let's just start with copying this file over. Got my Reaper folder on the flash drive already, my old config. I'm just gonna select all and delete. Grab everything here, select all and drag that over. So it's gonna take a couple minutes to copy that over. So I'm installing a portable version of my Reaper configuration. After I copy all these files to the flash drive, I'm going to go to the applications folder and grab my Reaper file, my reaper64.app, and I'm gonna drop that in here as well. And with the Macs, that's the basic way of making a portable install. You just put the application into the same folder as all of Reaper's configuration files. So what I'm copying over here is all my settings in the preferences. I have all my plugin presets, all my repack downloads here, all my scripts, absolutely everything that I'm used to using on my, my main system is now in this folder on this flash drive. Copying the app over to the same folder means that it's going to look in this folder for its configuration files instead of the uh, user folder. Then one other thing I like to do is to make a alias of this up one level. So that's right here. So this, when I click double click this, it's just going to look in this folder for this file. To do that, it's just a command option drag. Makes a little shortcut icon. It just makes a, a link to that you can put into another folder. Okay, so all the files I need are copied over. I'm gonna eject this drive and put it into the laptop. Okay, so now I'm on the laptop and I've got my Reaper.64 app. I'm gonna launch that. And now Reaper is loading and it's going through um, and scanning all my plugins and things like that. So it's going to tell me that control surface isn't found. That's normal because the control surface is not connected. That's fine. And it's going to say the audio device is not found. So that's fine because it's not connected. There's nothing connected right now. And close that. And as you can see, this window doesn't fit on this screen. So we're going to have to save all of the screen sets over again. Going to have to reset the audio device. Going to have to uh, save where the auto backups and the temp files are saved too. Uh, we'll probably have to clear the plugin cache. So let's open up to preferences. And I'm just going to set this to uh, default device for now. Let's go over to general and just scroll through here kind of till we find the important things that we're changing. So paths to save new files. I'll just leave this blank because it is not going to be the correct folder. So this folder, I'm saving it to the desktop because that's uh, where I have a folder saved already. Temp and what was that? This is peaks. It's going to save here. Okay. And going to project folder, it's going to load the project template and you can see it's going off of that flash drive. That's all good. Uh, the backup folder, Need to change that to again to the desktop. And this could also save to the flash drive. That doesn't really matter. Having it on a separate drive actually is maybe a little bit safer. So most of these other settings are going to be the same. By MIDI devices, I don't have anything because they're not connected. I check my decoder information. I think I need to update VLC. That's fine. My external editors, I think, 
Well, I'm going to leave them. I don't need them right now. And Mackie control, I'm going to remove because I'm, it's not installed. So I'm going to clear the cache and rescan my plugins. But actually, what I could do that's even faster than that is going into the uh, settings file and just deleting it. So I'm going to I'm going to quit Reaper, go into this folder, so effects folders. I can delete those because those are saved from my other system. I don't have the same plugins. Uh, I don't care if I don't have the same folder sets because as they don't exist. Um, all the VST plugin renames and stuff like that, I can delete. The AU plugins config, I can delete as well. Another thing I can delete is my media database because I don't have my sample library, only have this flash drive connected. On my other system, I have like seven hard drives. So those aren't going to be useful. Not that I need them. You know, why would I have them in here when I'm not using them? Okay, so it's asking me if I want to accept incoming network connections. I usually say yes. All right, so now let's fix the screen sets issue. So if I press one on my keyboard, that loads screen set one. If I press two, it loads screen set two. Three is, it looks different on my other system, but here it looks like this. Four is set up for video editing and it doesn't work at all because it's, you can't even use the timeline. So let's go back to screen set one. The simple way to get this back to the native resolution of the screen is to alt click on the plus sign. And it's the same process on Windows. Basically you just make this window that is active fit the screen that it's on. Now I'm gonna save my screen set again. Shift one is the keyboard shortcut I use. And I'm going to repeat the process for all my other screen sets. Make this a little bit bigger, it's more useful. Okay. Screen set three is essentially the same. And I know number four I'm not gonna use, but I may as well resize and save this anyway. That's a little bit better. So I can go one, two, three, and four. And I have my four different uh, screen sets that I might use. What else? What else can you expect to be different? Let's open up the Media Explorer. So I thought that deleting my database would clear these folders, but I realized I just deleted the contents of the database. It didn't actually remove it from Reaper's file list. So that's my bad. So Reaper Media, that's looking for the folder on my other drive. So you'll probably want to remove all these shortcuts from your system. So temp. Fine, documents is fine. Different system. So all these would need to be deleted. But now that it's set up like this, I think I've got it pretty much ready to go. I just have to build the template for my session and then I think I'm ready to record. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you've learned something. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.